In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a config file, where to put it, how to get the game to exec that config file every single time the game launches, and some things you can put in it like jump throw, follow recoil toggle, and instant bomb drop. So I did want to talk about one thing before we get started. Is using a config cheating? The answer is no. This seems like a silly question to veteran CS players, but if you're a new player, you're like, this seems like it's cheating, I'm altering game files, it's cheating, I'm gonna get banned. The short answer is no, you will not. It is not possible for you to get banned doing this. Literally pro players in pro matches use configs all the time. All you're doing is setting up a bunch of settings that are available to you in the console in game. Okay, so first I'm going to teach you how to prepare the file. So to make a config file, it's very, very easy. You literally just right click, go to new and create a text document. So you're going to call this auto exec. Now, if you want to, I will already have a blank autoexec.config file in the Google Drive linked down below. So you can just grab that and then paste in anything you want. I will also have all the other different kinds of commands that we're going to go over in this tutorial down there as well. Uh, I will also have some of it pasted into the description if you feel uncomfortable downloading files for any reason. But I'm going to have all of it available so you don't have to do it this way. But if you want to, make sure you follow these instructions. So after you have it called auto exec and then it's dot txt so i'm going to change this to dot cfg that it's going to pop up with this saying you're changing the file extension yes that's exactly what i want to do so if you're not seeing file extensions and you want to be able to change the file extension to from txt to dot cfg all you do is open up windows explorer you're going to go over to view and then right here, file name extensions, make sure that is checked and you'll be able to change it now. So this is Windows 10, Windows 11 is extremely similar. It's basically the exact same thing, although there's some small UI differences, you'll find it. I trust that you don't have a smooth brain. So to allow the game to run the auto exec every single time it launches, so you don't have to manually do it, all you do is go into Steam, go to your library, and then you're gonna go to Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Now this is for CS2 and when CS2 full releases, I'm imagining that there's gonna be a CS2. It's gonna be the exact same thing. So just go to that, right click, properties, and then scroll down and then here are your launch options. So all you need to have is plus exec auto exec dot CFG and that's gonna exec the auto exec every single time you launch the game. Okay, so now you have your auto exec file, even though it's blank, you have it ready to exec every time you open Counter-Strike 2 now we need to make sure to put the auto exec file where it needs to go. So I will just put that on screen right here. It should be the exact same for everybody if you have it installed on the main drive of your PC. If you are installing Steam games somewhere else, then make sure to go to that. But the last part of the file extension will be the exact same. So for CS2, it's a little counterintuitive, but I will go ahead and put it on screen in big letters up at the top right here. and. Other than that, it is gonna be on your main drive, program files, Steam. So this is wherever you have Steam installed and the game installed. So if you don't have it on your main drive, then of course, this is gonna be a little bit off, but you'll be able to find it. So you go where Steam is installed, Steam apps, common, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I know it's, it doesn't say CS2, but this is where you're gonna put it. Game, CSGO, also counterintuitive, and then config. So in here, you're gonna drop in your auto exec. I already have mine in here ready to go. So now there's very little left to do. You just have to populate your auto exec with whatever you want. So down in the description down below, I'll have that Google Drive link. I will have the different uh, configs labeled. You can just open them up, copy and paste whatever you're wanting into your auto exec and then edit it. So those options I have for you are jump throw config, which I think almost everybody wants. Even though jump throws are very easy in CS2, it's just easier to have it on a button. I will also have an instant bomb drop config so that you can drop the bomb with just one key press. I think it's really useful. Some people don't think it is, whatever. And then I'll also have a follow recoil config. So that basically allows you to toggle follow recoil on and off. I really like it for SMGs and actually the M4, but everything else I like to have a static crosshair. So once you have whatever you want in your auto exec config, it is as easy as launching Counter-Strike 2. So I'm gonna go ahead and prove to you that all of my config options are in here. So first I'm gonna show you the jump throw config. To use the config, all you have to do is pull the pin on the grenade and press whatever your bound jump throw is. For me, it's Z. And that is gonna give you a perfect, consistent jump throw. So if you simply press the button, then you're just gonna jump up and down and nothing will happen. You have to make sure to pull the pin on the grenade first and it'll throw it for you. 
So for the instant drop bomb config, all you do is press whatever your bound key is and you can just instantly drop the bomb. And at the bottom left hand corner, it's going to tell your team that you dropped the bomb. You can remove that if you want. Now for follow recoil, whenever my crosshair is red, that's my chosen color, I have a static crosshair. So it is not going to follow the recoil of the gun, I have to pull it down, very classic CS style. Now, on the other hand, if I change it, and now you can see that it is green, that's my chosen color for when it is on, then what's gonna happen is it's actually gonna follow the recoil of the gun. So not following recoil, And it's that easy. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions whatsoever, drop them in the comment section down below or just let me know whether I did a good or a bad job. I appreciated it and I will catch you guys next time.